Let's set up wireless radius authentication between wireless access point and a Windows 2016 server. Now this will also work on 2019, 2012, and it also works on 2008, but 2008 the uh, instructions are a little bit different. I'll, I'll post a link to the 2008 at the end of the video. All right, so we've got an ingenious wireless access point. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a 2.4 gigahertz SSID just for radius. Now, we also have 5 gigahertz as well, and there's no difference. You can also do 5 gigahertz. It's just I'm setting this up just for testing purposes only on the 2.4. So if we go to wireless uh, here and we scroll down to our 2.4 gigahertz setting, then this is where we set up our radius authentication. So I've already typed in a second SSID. I've got my regular SSID, which says police. It's just to throw people off. It's not really the police. And I've got my second one, which is radius. So you can add additional SSIDs. And it doesn't matter if it's a, an ingenious like this one is, which is a Wave 2 device, or if it's a, a, a Cisco or any other device. You can add multiple SSIDs without messing up your original uh, wireless. So that way you can do this test or do this project without uh, making any changes to your existing uh, production environment. All right, so we'll go ahead and click on Edit, and we'll log in, and we'll take a look at our setup. So by default, the security mode is going to be disabled, but obviously we want it to be WPA2 Enterprise. So our encryption is going to be AES. Our group key interval defaults to 3600, which is fine. And then we've got our radius server set to um, the IP address of our domain controller slash radius server. Now, in our case, our radius server is the same as the domain controller. In your case, it may not be. So if it's not, just, just point it towards the radius server. Don't worry about the domain controller. That will handle be handled by the radius server itself. All right, so now we've got the radius port it is by default UDP 1812. So you may have to make a firewall change on your Windows server just to make sure that that's open if you uh, need to. And then you've got the radius secret. Now, of course, I'm using this very not secure password uh, called password, but I suggest you put in a more secure one. And we're going to transfer these uh, settings onto our radius server here shortly. So now we're going to go into our server. And again, this is a 2016 server, it's a domain controller, and now it's also going to be a radius server, and it's going to be a certificate authority. If you already have a certificate authority in your network, you don't have to do the certificate authority portion of this. Uh, but if you do have one, or if you don't have one, then you'll want to go ahead and add this as well. So we're going to check the box that says Active Directory Certificate Services. Click Add Feature. And we're going to want to check the boxes for Network Policy and Access Server. And the remote access server as well. Even though we're not going to be re really using that part of it, they do work together. Go ahead and click Next, and we'll keep going. Oops, we got to go back a little bit, sorry. Uh, so we do want to make this a cert certification authority into our network, so we'll go ahead and click Next, and we'll click Next. And as far as the VPN goes, just check the box for direct access and VPN RAS, even though we're not going to use it. Let's go ahead and click Next and Install. While we're waiting, we can go ahead and go into our firewall. So we're going to go to our control panel by right-clicking on the Start button, which still works in Server 2016. At some point, they may update that. And we'll go to Advanced Settings. And then we'll click on Inbound Rules. So what we want to do is we want to create a radius rule. So we'll right-click on Inbound Rules and create a new rule. Choose Port. Next, UDP, and we'll choose port 1812. That's all we need for this. Allow the connection for all three types, and we'll just call it uh, radius rule, and finish. And you can see it goes to the top of our list, which is great. Okay, so there goes that. Our finished, uh, we finished our installation. And now we can click on the little triangle here. And we want to check the option for Configure Active Directory Certificate Services. So we'll go ahead and open that. And we're going to choose Next. We're going to make this a Certification Authority. Next. Enterprise Certification Authority, because it's a domain. If you don't have a domain controller, you can choose Standard. It's going to be a root CA. 
and we'll create a new private key or we can choose to use existing private key. Let's go ahead and create a new one. And we'll choose our defaults here. If you decide you want to go with a higher key length, just hit the drop down and choose the next level up. And we'll just double check that this looks correct. Yep, everything is spelled right. Looks good. Next. And as far as the years goes, I like to make this 50 years, so that way you don't have to worry about renewing it anytime soon. Choose the default location and choose configure. It was successful, so we'll click close. And now we'll choose the network policy service. So we install the network policy service and you'll see it right there, network policy. And we're gonna go and do another wizard here in just a second. So we're gonna choose this option where it says radius server for dial-up. Now, if you don't see that here, make sure you're checked on NPS local. So we're going to choose the drop down, choose radius server for wireless, and then we'll configure 8021X. We'll choose secure wireless connections, next. And here's where you're going to want to stop uh, this particular configuration and go into Active Directory Users and Computers because it's going to want to know, hey, what uh, radius clients do you want to allow? So we're going to go back to the Server Manager and open up Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers. Now, if your domain controller is a different server, obviously you're going to have to change at this point. So we'll click on Computers, and there we see our desktop. This is the only computer that's joined to the domain besides the domain controller itself. So let's go ahead and right click and choose new, and we're gonna create a group. It's gonna be a security group. So we'll just call it Rad PCs. You can call it whatever you want. Double click on it, choose members, click add, and we're gonna add our computer. Gotta choose computers from the list or it won't know that's what you're trying to do. And there is our desktop. All right, so this particular computer, this PC, has both a wired and wireless network card in it. So we're going to connect to it remotely on the wired card, but then we're going to use our radius uh, connectivity through the wireless. So that way you can see both what it is I'm doing and uh, we can also use our wireless uh, radius authentication. So that'll make a lot more sense once we get that to that point. So let's go back into our radius clients, click add. And we're just going to call this uh, WAP Profile. And the IP address is going to be looking for our wireless access point. So we'll put in 192.168.15.5. So that's our ingenious access point. Let's go ahead and put in our shared secret. So remember, it was password with a capital P and a zero. So we'll click OK. Now, if you have additional wireless access points, you can add them here. Or if you have a wireless access controller that controls all the access points, you can just add that IP address alone. We'll go ahead and click Next. And we have the option for the type of EAP, and we're going to choose EAP PEEP. Go ahead and click Next. And now we have the groups. Let's go ahead and click Add. And we'll go ahead and type in our RAD PCs that we created just a little while ago. And then we'll check that name. And it found it, and we'll click Next. We'll leave the control configuration alone and finish. So what this did is if we expand policies is it just created a couple of policies for us. It created a connection policy and a network policy. So let's take a look at the uh, connection policy first, and you can see that it is a secure wireless connection policy and it's doing a wireless policy here, and there's really nothing that we need to change there. So we'll go ahead and click Cancel. So everything's good for there. Let's click on the Network Policy, and you can see two policies beneath it. These are for VPN, and by default, they're disabled. So you can just leave those disabled, unless, of course, you are also running VPN, then you can configure those separately. So we'll double-click on our wireless connection, make sure it looks good, it is enabled, and we'll go ahead and go to Conditions. And we see that our RAD PCs group got added along with the wireless policy. And we're also using eat peep for our EAP type. And it also shows MS Chap 2 we can, and MS Chap. We'll just leave those. We don't really need them, but we'll just leave them. And we'll click OK. Now we're going to go to our MPS at the top. 
and we're going to want to choose to register the server in Active Directory. So if you've never installed this before, this won't be grayed out. So I've installed this before, so you can see it's grayed out for me, but yours won't be grayed out. So you'll select that, and then you'll choose um, to accept uh, the next box that pops up and then you'll be in business. So without doing that, the network policy server is not going to have any authority to accept any clients. So we've got to make sure that we do that. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize our NPS policy. And now we're going to go into group policy management. So from your domain controller, you got to go to tools and choose group policy management. Now, in my case, my domain controller is the same as my radius server, so I'm good to go. So I'm going to right click on my widget.internal database and choose to create a GPO in this domain and link it here. I'll go ahead and call it radius policy, but you can call it anything you want. And then I'm going to go down here to where it says security filtering, filtering and I'm going to add in our group. Make sure we change the object type to computers. Okay, check names. So we're going to be allowing all authenticated users, you know, say members of the domain, as well as uh, the computers themselves. So now we're going to right click and edit the policy. And we're going to go to policies under computer configuration. We're going to go to Windows settings. We'll expand that. And then we're going to go to security settings. Then we'll go to public key policies. At the bottom, let's go ahead and double click on the auto enrollment for the certificate services client. And we'll choose to enable that. And we'll also check the boxes for renew, expired, and update certificates. Nothing else needs to be checked. So we'll go ahead and apply it and click OK. Now we'll go to automatic certificate request settings and double click on that. And we'll right click anywhere in the box, choose new, automatic certificate request, and we'll get a wizard that pops up. Click next. We're going to choose computer. Now there's four different types here. You can select each one, but we're going to choose computer because that's the type we need. We'll go ahead and click next and finish. And that's really all there is to that one. And now we're going to go to the wireless network 802.11 policies, which is up several boxes. And we're going to right click on the right hand side again and we'll choose create a wireless network policy for Vista and later releases. So that means if you've got Windows 7, Windows 10, whatever it is, this is the policy for that. If you have any Windows XP, you can create a policy there. But of course, those are no longer supported. So we've got our new wireless network policy. We'll just call this WAP policy, but you can really call it anything you like. There are no rules there. Get rid of our description. We don't need it. Now we're going to add in the SSID, and it's going to be the infrastructure because that's the standard type of wireless access point. If you have an ad hoc, you'll know that you have that type. But by default, they're all pretty much infrastructure. We're going to call this the WAP profile. And we're going to put in the SSID, and we know that's called Radius 2.4. If you remember from the beginning of the video, that's what we called our SSID. So we'll go ahead and click Add. And let's uncheck the connect to a more preferred network if available. We just want to connect to this one. And uh, of course, we'll connect to it when it's in range automatically. Click on security and make sure that we're going to be on WPA2 Enterprise and AES CCMP. You've got peep eep for our authentication. And we're going to change our authentication mode to computers. So it's only going to be computers that are joined to the domain. And then we're going to click on properties. And we're going to click on connect to these servers. So we're going to put in the name of our radius server. So it's win2016.widget.internal. Of course, your domain is going to be different. And we'll scroll down to the bottom and we're going to choose our certificate authority. So you see two different uh, ones there. We're just going to, or three different ones there, actually. We're just going to go ahead and choose the bottom one. That's going to be the newest one. Most likely, you only have one because you've only installed it one time. I've actually installed this multiple times, so I see several of them here. There's nothing else to check, so we'll just go ahead and click OK. And now we'll click OK on this box, and we'll apply it, and click OK once again. So now what happens when we have a computer that's joined to the domain that is a member of that group that we created in Active Directory, we add those to the RAD PCs group. 
uh, then uh, they will automatically get that policy applied to them. So let's go ahead and switch over to our workstation and we'll try to connect. Now I've restarted my workstation because in order to apply a computer policy, it will require a reboot. If it was a user policy, then we could just type GP update slash force, but computer policies require a reboot. So once that's back up, we'll log in. We are now connected to our client computer and it's just a Windows 10, just to show you it's a Windows 10, I'll click on system. And you can see it's a Windows 10 Pro 64-bit, nothing really special about it. It is a member of the domain, however. All right, so we'll go ahead and click on our available networks. And you can see a lot of different things here, but Radius 2.4 is the name that I have for my SSID. So you're either going to see the name of your SSID, or you're going to need uh, see this, the name of your uh, policy, uh, that the, the group policy that you created. One of those two is going to show up for you. And you're just going to go ahead and click on it and choose Connect. And look at that, it says connected and secured. So let's confirm that we're connected and we're getting an IP address. So we'll go ahead and type ipconfig slash all. So if we go ahead and go to where it says Wi-Fi, which you see right here, we can see we've got an IP address of .110. Now our wired connection is set to 117. So I've got two different IP addresses, the wired and the wireless. And of course the wireless is being done through our radius setup that we just did. So if for some reason you don't see the SSID that you're expecting, then what you want to do is go to GP result slash R and make sure you're uh, logged in as the administrator or have an administrator prompt. Otherwise, you're not going to see this correctly. So if we scroll up to where it says applied group policy objects, you should see that radius policy that we applied. If you didn't, then go back to the policy and make sure that you applied it to the correct group and that your computer is a member of that group. And then restart and you should see the radius policy under applied group policy objects under computer settings. Because remember, it's a computer policy, not a user policy. I also promised you a link in case you're using a 2008 server. And here is the link you see here at the top. You can pause if you want. If you don't want to type that super long link, then you can just type in the name of the author is uh, Tino Todino. And I think that's how you say it. And then you uh, would just type in how to set up uh, wireless uh, WPA2 EAP wireless, and then you'll get that for 2008. So that wraps it up. I assume that uh, most of you are going to be able to get this to work properly, but it only takes one little thing to have it break. So um, if you have any problems, go ahead and put it in the comments section, and I'll see if I can answer those for you. But uh, hopefully good luck that you'll be able to get that to work for you. And you can check out the rest of my channel. We have about 3,000 uh, videos so far and counting for various different how-to. Most of them have to do with Windows Server and networking.